Hi there, this is Sean, The Honest Book Reviewer, with another book review. In this video, we're discussing Truth Witch, written by Susan Dennard, as the first book in the Witchlands series. Here's the cover. It's a fantasy novel. It's young adult fantasy. It's not big on world building. So if you like world building and a lot of description about the world that this novel is set in, about the history of the nations, of the people in the nations, this book isn't for you. What it is, it's very fast paced. A lot of action scenes, a lot of movement, a lot of characters that are very vibrant, um, a lot of emotion going on in the book. That's the main focus of the story. I still enjoyed it. Even though I do like world building as a rule in fantasy, I did enjoy this because it's the action, the fast paced nature of it that made it what it is. The start of this book is a great hook. Our two main characters, Sophia, or Safi, and Isuelt, or Is, they're about to rob a stagecoach. Unfortunately, the information they got was wrong. The stagecoach is heavily protected by about 30 soldiers. They need to stop these soldiers from walking across the booby trap they've set in the road. They manage to do that, but what they don't know is there's a blood witch protecting the stagecoach as well. And we learn the Blood Witches are self-healing. We know this because there's a fight scene between our two main characters and the Blood Witch. And the Blood Witch is also a warrior monk. And he's a warrior monk who agrees to do jobs for people who pay him. And often the highest bidder gets his attention and gets his contract. In the battle, they injure him and they get away. But he's got their scent because Blood Witches can also smell the blood of people and they can distinguish the smell from person to person. That's very interesting to learn in this book as well. And what we do learn in this book is there's many, many different types of witches, and those witches can do many, many different types of things. I won't go into the whole range of witches that are in this land, because there's so many of them, and as I was reading this book, I was writing down each one. But the list is getting very long, and it might be too long for this video, but I might do a separate video just on the different types of witches and maybe the world this series is set in. But what we do know is that Safi is a truth witch and what she can do is just tell if people are telling the truth or lying. Isuelt is a thread witch. What that means, she can see the life threads of living creatures, human and animal. She can't see her own threads though or the threads of other thread witches. And what thread witches can also do is make thread stones. And what thread stones are, are stones that have different properties. Some can be worn by people and they can see if the person that they're linked with is alive still. Other things block pain, that sort of thing. But Isuelt can't make thread stones herself, even though other thread witches can. That's interesting. I don't know what that means for the character per se, don't know if it's described so much in the book, but just a difference between her and other thread witches. Anyway, they get away from the monk, from the blood witch as well, but he has their scent because blood witches can smell people and they can track them from scent, from the scent of their blood. They get back to town, but they know they've got to leave. They know this blood witch will be, tra will be tracking them out to get them. So they pack up belongings and they leave. Unfortunately, the Blood Witch is on their tail in the town and is called in help from other monks to come and help him. As they're trying to get away in the town, Safi is swept up off the streets by friends, by Matthew and Habim. They sweep her up, put her in a carriage because they want her to get to safety. Also, her uncle is in town. Her uncle's there for a peace summit and before the peace summit, there's going to be a grand ball and her uncle has demanded that she attend the ball, and now she has to. So that's Safi. Izzy Welt, on the other hand, is told, get to the other side of the city, get to an inn, and lay low. Unfortunately, Izzy Welt then finds out this monk has tracked her. She manages to get out of the inn, but the monk's on her tail. If he catches her, he will kill her. It will be quite a struggle. She may not get away. She does manage to get away, but she has to steal a horse 
and there's only one place where she thinks she'll be safe, and that's where she came from, where her mother still is. It's a settlement of her people, and it's a few miles out of town. When Safi's at the ball, there's a big shock for her. A big announcement. And that announcement is she's the betrothed of the Emperor. She knew nothing of this. And it's a big shock for her, and she doesn't want to be in that position. All of a sudden, all the flames go out. It's total darkness. There's panic. People are screaming, running everywhere. Safi's whisked away by people, whisked away out of the palace, out of the ball, and she's whisked away to safety, or so she thinks. This is another great scene in this book. It's almost like a car chase scene, but with horse and car. And it's very intense and very gripping. And the author does manage to write some very gripping and intense scenes. A lot of action in this book. A lot of high emotion as well. All the characters seem very highly strung, very emotive in this story. Also in this story, there's a shadow, some kind of sinister shadow that's tracking Isuelt. And it tracks her in her dreams mainly. And I found this a very good element in this story. It's sinister, almost like a villain, but you don't know much about it at the very start. You learn more as you go on. And I did like learning more about this sinister feeling, this sinister shadow in this story. It added a lot to the story, because in fantasy, you need some sort of villain, you need an evil. And we do have that in this book. And it comes in different ways. The Blood Witch, who's the monk, he's a villain as well, but he's a different type of villain. He thinks he's doing the right thing. He's just trying to make money for himself, but he has ties to other things in the book. And we learn more about that as the story goes on as well. What's interesting about this monk as well is he has a lot of honor and sometimes his behavior is so honorable, he loses his prey. And that's interesting in this story. So we have a lot of different elements going on in this story that make it a worthwhile read. Even though that world building is not there very much. You know, I wanted that world building more. I want to learn more about the nations and why they're there, their history. The only thing you learn about the history is that there was a 20 year peace agreement, a peace treaty, and that's about to expire. We don't really learn why that came about. We just learn there was a lot of fighting, a lot of wars going on, and then the big nations signed a peace treaty. Unfortunately for little nations, that peace treaty didn't mean that much. And we learn more about that as the book goes on as well, why that's so. But not enough to satisfy people who want the real, real history about these nations. And I'm hoping we learn more about that later on in this series. Also in this book, the magic is very well described, especially different types of magic by different types of witches. And I did like that in this story. It was very, very colorful, very vivid. And you can picture that in your mind, what's going on. So top marks for the author for creating a magic system that's very colorful and vibrant and for describing it in a way that's easy for the reader to picture in their minds. I did enjoy that in this story. In some ways, the magic system, the way I picture it, it does remind me of picturing the magic in the Wheel of Time, you know, different threads in the air, and that's how I see some of the magic going on in this story. Sophia, or Safi, is, of course, one of the main characters in this story. She's a truth witch, and she tries to hide the fact, because being a truth witch can be dangerous in this world, because they're very valuable. Because imagine if a very powerful person controlled a truth witch. They could tell when anybody was telling the truth or lying. And it would give them an edge on other people. As we find out in this story, is that if people find out she's a truth witch, they might want her, they may want to possess her. She's very headstrong. Doesn't like people telling her what to do. She's very loyal, but loyal to Isuelt above anything else. But she has a lot of compassion as well, compassion for people, and that comes about in her storyline, in her character growth. And her character growth is quite interesting, because she starts to learn things about herself as well, about her own power that she never realized before. Sometimes it's not a very positive thing she learns. Sometimes she learns things that maybe she assumed in the past aren't true. And I like that about this story. It adds a bit more doubt to the character, a bit more reality and she seems more lifelike and I do like that about the character and I think the author did a good job in that. Isuelt 
is the second main character in this story. She's my favourite character in this book and the series so far. She's very complex, and I like the fact that she's very mysterious. There are a lot of different things going on for Uzuelt in this story. Not always positive, and she's got the most things going on out of any other character in this book. I like the fact that she's an outsider as well. You know, when she goes anywhere in this series, anywhere in the world, people don't like her. They distrust her just because of who she is. And that's very interesting because you don't know what's going to happen for Easy Welt in any part of the book. Is she in danger all the time? Because it seems like she is. Also that shadow aspect, that shadow that's haunting her dreams, and that's very mysterious as well. And she's trying to work out what's going on with that. It just gives you the impression that Easy Welt may be more powerful than we think she is at the start of this book. And I really want to know what's going to happen to Easy Welt as this story goes on. She's the main character for me in this series. Merrick. Merrick is a prince of Nebrevna, and we learn that quite early on in the book, but it is a shock for our main characters. He's also the love interest for Safi in this story. We see that going on a bit in the book. He has some very big moments in this story, very pivotal moments, and he seems a very powerful character. And I like the fact that even though he controls a small nation, or well, he's a prince of a small nation. He's got such a big scope, a wider scope than just his nation. He wants the best for everybody, it seems, and he's trying to get that. And he's struggling from many factors. He's struggling against other nations who want to crush his nation. He's struggling against his sister and his own father who want to get control back from the Brevna, but in different means. And his character is very strong, very, very vibrant and colourful as well, but also very emotional. And the thing about this character that I didn't like so much is his anger in the book. It didn't make sense how he gets angry so often and so quickly. And it happens very often in the book. And it was just overdone in my opinion. Now, you don't mind an emotional character in a story, but it just seemed like the author was trying to shove it down our throats that his character is always angry, very quick to anger, that it controls everything he does. I'll mention one more character, and that's Adjuan. He's the warrior monk and the blood witch. He's a villain, and he's so well written in this book. He's another character that's my favourite. I just like this character so much. Even though he's a villain in the story, I loved his scenes and I wanted more of him. He's so gripping, so engaging, and I like the fact that he's so complex. He has different motives going on. There are different things pulling him, you know, in different directions in this story. And at certain times, you don't know what he's going to do. And that's because of his different motivations. And he has this strange honor system as well that he goes by. Even though he's a villain, he lives by honor. And sometimes that honor leads him to lose his prey. He makes a choice to save somebody that he should be killing or capturing. And that's very interesting in this story. He's so complex, such a great character, and I'm really wanting to know what happens in his future in this story. This book is hard to rate because it's got some great positives, but also some negatives going on. The positives are just the action the fast-paced nature of the story, the way it moves. You know, it's very well constructed, very well plotted. And I think the author took a lot of care to do that. The negatives are the world building, not enough of it. I want to learn more about the history, about the different nations while they're there. I want to learn more about the people who live in these nations. I just want to learn more about the world in general. And that's a big part of fantasy, I think. So that's not there, it leaves a big hole in the story. So I rate this a 3 out of 5. I think it's written very well. I think the characters are too over-emotional, I think, at times. You know, they need to be toned down a little bit. But I think just the action, the movement, the gripping scenes, you know, the fight scenes, the descriptions of the magic, that makes this a really good book to read. And I'm looking forward to reading the rest of the series. On my channel, I do review other fantasy books. If you don't want to miss out on those videos, check out my channel and subscribe. Also, there's a fantasy playlist on my channel. It should be on your screen now.